So we will warm up with 12-7 and then make the call after warm up. We know. You know you're just not telling us. Well, it's not you that I'm not, not, want, not wanting to tell. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> I know. So Lena Solmark will, will be starting today. And, uh, you know, I think everybody realizes the challenge we have and uh, the reaction we want to show to our last home game where we finished with a very disappointing third period and we're going to be tested on all fronts today. If you look at Vegas, whether it's from their goalie through the way they're D playing a very disciplined way and the, the danger of their forward group, uh, we, we need to come out here with, uh, with an A game to compete with them. Is uh, is a big ask, and we're we're excited for for the game that we're going to see tonight. How much are you being very serious by asking this? Uh, what is the advantage for you, like Vegas or the <coughs> opponent, whether they know if you're going to go with you know, yeah. seventy or sixty? What is the advantage for yeah. you that you get out of that? Yeah, well, it's just for sure the mi the mix up of the forward lines. So it's 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 a little less. Uh, uh, it, it, it's it's a little less transparent how how your lines are going to roll and because uh, different people can go through different places and uh, you know it's it's also with the with the seven D it's easier for us maybe to to focus on different pairings that we have that we think are are more stable and it's not always the same pair playing up against who we think is the most threatening line and uh, so both of those variations kind of change change the way the other team might might enter the game but it gives you some elements of surprise really throughout the game how do you value the short term snippet of the opponent for example Vegas has been outscored in the first period 10 to nothing in the last four games when you have a short <coughs> sample right before you play an opponent how much do you value that particular piece yeah we really go off as an example the the minutes played of a player over the last 10 games i, I think it's it's too big a picture now to go over 40 games you need to see what what that group's trends are so that's no secret that we we kind of will, will look off that and the same will be the the actual video footage that you concentrate on is uh, primarily the last three games because uh, if there have been adjustments made they're usually consistent through that picture where again it's dangerous now if we don't find the information we need we'll go further and or back always to a game that we might have played against the team like we did against Vancouver we'll, even if it's it's uh, you know two months ago. We'll we'll look at that. But otherwise, it's it's a small capture. I think most teams probably work similarly. But it's uh, you know you you definitely compress the season in so far as analyzing what the opposition's up to. And how much is this kind of a mystery game because these teams haven't met in fifteen months? Yeah. Well, it's definitely uh, an outstanding challenge for us because. We are attempting to play a 60-minute game within a certain guideline of parameters and principles and concepts, and Vegas does it as well as anybody in the league, so a lot of respect for what they're doing there and the challenge, but it's, uh, it's a perfect measuring stick for us where we're at in being able to match a team with that discipline uh, in, in your own personal execution, because the team that sticks to their game plan the most diligently tonight will win. And, uh, and so we're really enjoying this one because I, I do have a lot of respect for, for what they're doing as a group and how they're, how they're all in on what they do. And we need that desperately every night. And we're still learning. How we, we do fall into some, some old habits here and there. They, they sneak up sometimes within a game or within a period uh, irrelevant of the score. And we need to continue to work on that consistency with the guys are working hard to do and they are aware what those, what those principles are, whereas Vegas is already doing them all the time. In that, in that sense, because, you know, if you want to take a 10-game take a snapshot of the Sabres, where are you structural-wise as opposed to where you were yeah. to begin the season? Because there have been the lapses, especially if you go back yeah. to the third period of the last Well, that would be probably the opposition doing that to us. I mean, ours is a never-ending journey, right? So we woke up again today uh, seeing opportunity to learn off of the Detroit game. You know, yes, we won 5-1, but there are so many situations within the game that we can build on and learn on. And we've got players coming new to us like a Freleek or a player coming up from the minors like a Wilson. And within that structure, you continue to teach. So your group working with individuals, but also with the group in, as a whole, like I've told you. So 
Our process is a much smaller picture than that, to tell you quite honestly. We need to get up today and be better than we were yesterday. We need to continue to solidify habits that are far from solidified. So uh, the larger snapshots are for you all to look at, and uh, that noise stays outside of our room. Well, Gergensen's is just uh, you know such a such a team team player in so far as what's the role that is being asked and what do I need to do and how can I do it he he's uh, you know he, he's very passionate in doing what the team needs whether it's in the you know on a penalty killing role or whether it's you know supporting Eichel and Reinhardt in, uh, in, in a role where he needs to add grit to to uh, a pair that's as dynamic as any in the league so his ability to do that because of his attitude and his his passion is, uh, you know, he's a fun player to coach, an important, important uh, character player to have on the team. He's willing to finish hits, get in shot lanes, and uh, just be there for the team. What do you think just about the way he plays? Just, you know, he's, he's a tenacity level. Yeah. No, no, what's well, important that he keeps his feet moving. I mean, when he's skating, he's, uh, he's a force, and he makes a difference in both directions, and that's what we like about him is he generally is always giving it all and, uh, you know, I, I, I cannot think of very many moments where he's not trying his hardest, which is if you do that as a group and make mistakes, you get away with those mistakes. If the work ethic isn't there, you don't. And it's just the league is too good for that. So he's, he's a player where you know what you're getting every day and you need a, you need a core of those in every team. And, uh, and, and if you have those, that, uh, that's, where, that's where you kind of build the heart of the team. And out of that, you can then find moments for skill and moments for for cohesiveness offensively, but uh, you know he's one of those centerpieces work ethic-wise. For Alan Miller, when he, things are going well for him, yeah. what do you see? And when things aren't going so well, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, Colin is, uh, is, is, uh, is a good one for, uh, for you know, just continuing to adapt to what we want to see. And what he has for sure is he has an ability to add uh, an offense, offensive punch, which we, we believe is still going to evolve here with us. And uh, sometimes I've always told you that you you lose a little of your offense as you're getting used to the defensive concepts of a group and trying to find your way within that system. And that's been his situation. I'm sure his offense will, will bloom as he continues to learn to, uh, to, to be that player we need without the puck. And he's working hard at it. And we're, we're, you know, we, we, we love having him in the team. He's an important part of our group character-wise. And also you know, in the games, he, he's, he has that ability to add the offense that we need from our defensive core. Is there an ideal type of player you'd like to see with Jack and Sam? Like, is there, in your mind, is there a, the kind of winger you'd like yeah. to see with that group? Well, Victor Olofsson is as, as good as he gets. That, that was, you know, for sure an elite line in the National Hockey League, and it's difficult for anybody to fill that, that, uh, that spot. But we get different looks with different people going in there now. Uh, you know, the ideal person is Victor Olofsson.